Hi everyone, I'm Kayleigh Wainwright, Director of Youth Sector Innovation at UK Youth. I'm really pleased to welcome Michelle Elman with us today, um, who's here to talk about her new book, How to Say No. So did you want to tell us a little, about, a little bit about you and the book? Yes, yeah, so I'm an author and I'm a life coach and this is my debut children's book. So it's my first time venturing into children's and I'm so excited to be doing that because I've actually always wanted to work with children before I even knew what I wanted to do as a job. I knew I wanted to work with children. I always think everyone's sort of born with their own passion and children have just been mine, maybe because of the childhood I had. I had a lot of surgeries growing up, so my childhood wasn't the easiest. And so I think it's always motivated me to make life easier for children because I do think your childhood should be protected, should maintain your innocence and have that period of time where you have no responsibilities and your only job is to enjoy yourself and have fun. Brilliant. And so the book, How to Say No, specifically, you've talked about why you want to why you wanted to work with children. Um, but in terms of the theme, How to Say No, how did that come about? So I was a massive pushover <laughs> as a child and I really struggled with boundaries. I actually only learned boundaries when I was 21. And what's funny is that now that I'm called a boundaries expert, everyone thinks it's because I'm so good at boundaries. But actually, it was the opposite. It was the fact that I didn't have them for so long. And then when you learn them, they are a new language. And the first thing I kept thinking was, why wasn't I taught this earlier? How was I supposed to know this without anyone telling me this? And I don't even think the word boundaries existed when I was growing up. And so I think it was that passion of, I wish I had that when I was younger. I wish I could give that to other children. And when my second book, The Joy of Being Selfish, which is all about boundaries as well, came out, everyone, especially my followers, were like, now make a children's book and I was like oh I'll just be repeating the same things over and over again it'll be boring and I just asked my literary agent what do you think that's a possibility and what happened at Penguin the next day she was meeting with um and an editor specifically said she was looking for a boundaries book for kids so it just felt like the universe aligned and this book was meant to be um which I'm just happy that children have an opportunity to learn about it younger. And even if you don't do it perfectly, even if you don't do it 100%, you've at least got that information. And I always think if you've got that information and you're unconscious, it can click into place at the point when you need it. Yeah, brilliant. So are you hoping that um, this book will be picked up by sort of teachers and youth workers as well as young people and children themselves? Yeah, so we made sure that it was a guide for all areas of your life. So not just parents, but it's also about schools and saying things that might be a little bit controversial, like teachers aren't always right. But those are the things I wish I knew when I was younger. And sometimes when you're in a situation which isn't ideal with teachers and it doesn't always happen, but there are times when you need to know that actually you can advocate for yourself or at home with siblings. Or in the book, I say the siblings are the, one, the housemates you never chose. And <laughs> that can be quite difficult. So we talk about that. We talk about um, online boundaries and then we talk about boundaries around your body. I'm really passionate about young kids knowing that body shame is never acceptable, whether it's towards you or you perpetuating it to other people. And I hope by in, uh, instilling those morals and values from a young age, they take that further in, on into life, especially now that online life is such a big part of life that you can't just say things online with no consequence um, yeah. because there's a real person reading those words. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what advice would you give to young people around setting some of those boundaries? So I think it, it does start with the word no. <laughs> no is the first and simplest boundary that you learn. And also it's a word you knew inherently. And then when you get to about three, four years old, you have this thing called theory of mind where not only are you able to think, but you're able to realize other people are thinking. And in order for that to happen, that means they can think about you, which means they can think badly about you. And that's when saying no becomes a little bit more complicated because a two-year-old has no problem saying the word no. But then as you get older, you start wanting to be liked and wanting to be included in the group. And all of that makes it more complicated. And that's when you might be more vulnerable to peer pressure or you might feel a bit more shy to actually communicate your needs. Mm -hmm. And so this is basically reminding them that actually you've always had this skill and you can keep this skill as you grow older. And we want to unlearn this idea that in order to be a good child, they're complicit and listen to everything and um, don't have their own voice. Because actually you can have your own voice, you can still be respectful of adults around you, but know what you need and vocalise that to the people who can help you. Well, that's brilliant. I'm sure that so many young people will find that so helpful. 
Um, and obviously, as um, you know, quite a young author yourself and a young person, as you just said, experiencing some of those challenges. Um, what would you say to sort of young people who are like looking up to you almost as a role model? You've gone through this, you've become an author and, and a speaker and a life coach. Like, what would your tips be to them for young authors or young people aspiring to be like that? So growing up in school, I was dyslexic. I was told I was reading too young for my age. And actually, until that point, I loved reading. I was always caught with a book. I have so many pictures of me as a child with books. Mm -hmm. And then once I got told all those messages of like, you're too dyslexic, you're not keeping up with your peers, all of this, my love for reading disappeared. And actually, I just wish I could go back to me at that age and tell her that it's okay to read whatever books make you happy and that no one can tell you what you can't do. I have had four books out now and no, even through secondary school I was repeatedly told that my writing is what let me down. In university I got told I would get higher marks if I could write better and actually no one can dictate that for you and there's not one blanket way of writing well. There are some people who write in different styles to others and my writing is a very accessible style because I want it to be inclusive. I want everyone to read it. And so any child who's wanting to write a book, write it, even if it doesn't get published, even if no one else sees it, even if all you want to write is write in your diary. I just think writing is so good for your mental health because sometimes you have so many thoughts in your head and actually just getting it out on paper means you're not just talking to yourself all day. Yeah. That's such good advice. Thank you. Um, and I think one of the things that we really see um, through our work is that youth workers can really support young people to like think big and you know go beyond um, what they might think is possible to achieve some of the things that like you've just you've just shared. So I think that's really great. And um, yeah, I think teachers, schools, youth workers, youth clubs all have a sort of a role to play in that. So thank you for sharing. And we definitely hope that more. Uh, young people will be able to achieve what they want. Um, so just thinking about the book specifically and the tips and advice that you've written in there, what would you say are some of the top tips um, uh, from How to Say No that you'd like to share with young people? So boundaries are all about how you are treated. So anytime you're thinking about setting a boundary, it's usually because someone has crossed your boundary. And so the big two emotions that you will feel are anger and resentment. And knowing where those two sit in your body is really important. And that's where to start. So if you ever feel that moment of discomfort, say something, say anything. Even if it, you can't say the word no, say something like, that doesn't work for me, or say, I don't know how I feel about that. Give yourself a moment to pause. And if you struggle to say no in the moment, then buy yourself more time. Saying things like, can I get back to you next week about that? A lot of the times in the moment, especially if someone's inviting you to a party and you know you don't want to go, you know you're too busy, you can feel a lot of pressure to be in your popular group or be with all your friends and all those things. So actually saying something like, I'll get back to you next week, I need to ask my mum or whatever it is, buys you some time. And then the final thing is that it's okay to be scared to say no. It's not meant to be a comfortable thing. It's meant to be something that's different to the way you've been living your life. And But the good news is the first time you say no will be the scariest and then it gets easier after that. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Michelle Elman. I'm the author of How to Say No. It's out now in all good bookstores. And you can find out more about me at Michelle L. Elman on any social media. If you'd like to find out more about the work that we do at UK Youth to support young people and you'd like to get involved to support or donate, check out our website, which is ukyouth.org or our social channels.